We've all seen videos like this or this where we are promised new and heightened levels of productiveness once we watch the video and implement the system. I've realized that the ultimate productivity system doesn't exist. I still plan my day, of course. It's not perfect and that doesn't really matter as long as I stick with it and get the things I want to do done, then who really cares how I plan? And probably the same goes for many other people like you. Find a system that works, stick to it, do the things, do more, and boom, you're achieving what you want to in life without worrying about the planning and the system. And is it a good system? I don't know. Well, my system's super simple, or at least I think it is, and this is how I plan my week. Okay, it is Sunday. I use this Notion template by Jules Acre. But at the beginning of the week, we go into weekly planning, and this is the weekly review page. So we'll start with how I'm feeling this week. What would make this week stellar? What am I working on this week to get closer to my goals and my biggest priorities? Okay, that seems like a pretty good weekly check-in. And then here's the most important part of the week, and that is the brain dump. So everything that I can think of that needs to be done this week, I'll just write it down. Okay, so I can't think of anything else, and this is where I go to look at my yearly goals and see if I need to move anything forward. So meditation, I'm moving forward just fine. That's done. I'm working on shorts. I do need to put in a brilliant sponsor. Right, I think that's all the tasks that I have for now, and then I'll just put them into... That one's personal, personal. And I'll look at my top priorities. So this week I need to film. So top priorities are done. See what's up. Today we're going to do some of these things. This is the important part is Google Calendar. And let's see your top priorities. And make sure that I just have everything that needs to happen. That is what the week looks like. Now there are a bunch of time blocks here that are open. I'm not trying to fill everything out at the beginning of the week since they will change. As the week goes on and I get emails and updates and editing, like I might not finish both of these today and then I might have to move it into the future. So who knows? Uh, the point of this is that I have to stay flexible and I try not to work too much in one day or I try not to work within the hours that I have placed uh, for myself, for self-care. So these are non-negotiables. This is another system that I learned from another YouTuber uh, where she does work, non-negotiables, and play on her calendar. And I'll link uh, to her channel down below if you're interested. This is what the initial week looks like. I know calendars look super pretty, but it is doesn't happen how I plan it. And I don't know if that's a downside of my planning or maybe that's just an upside of my flexibility. It took approximately 15 minutes to fill out my weekly review, fill out my Google Calendar, review my goals for the year, how it's going. Um, and now we just sort of move forward. See, I allotted an hour here, but I don't need that. So now I've got time. I can move this up. I could add some time here. I can add something else. Who knows? A lot of this process is a way for me to offload the weird small things that need remembering, like taking out the trash and recycling, or mailing something off, bringing my compost to the curb, etc. But it also helps me stay focused. I have several goals for this year. I think it's like seven, six or seven. And I try to only do things that support my goals and everything else really isn't as important or they're just not a priority right now. What about all the other things you wanna do like travel, start new businesses, start a podcast, more brand deals or projects? You know, Warren Buffett gives a really good piece of advice on this and I'll try to summarize it at the top of my head. He has a three-step process for determining what you focus on, like what you really, really want to do. First, you list off 25 things that you want to do by order of importance or, de or your desire to do them. Second, you want to circle the top five things that you really, really, really want to accomplish. And third, you want to put the other 20 things on a do not do list. The most dangerous things are those 20 things. Because you want to do them, you're more likely to turn away from the top five to do any of these 20 things because you have an interest in them. A question I constantly ask myself is, does this make me excited? If not, then the answer is no. Because if I'm not excited about it now, I won't be excited about it when I 
actually have to go do the thing. So I choose to only focus on a few things because if I take on any more, I don't think I would enjoy it as much. And I don't think I would be able to give my attention to my priorities. So the things that I pick are my businesses, my relationship and family, my health and fitness, and things like maintaining or improving my environment. And eventually, you'll be done with one of those things on your top five list, and then only then can you put something else in its place. For example, I really want to start a podcast, but I don't have space or time for it this year. So maybe when I'm done with one of the things I have to do this year, I'll start on it. But if not, it's going to have to wait. I read a really good book called 4,000 Weeks recently that helped me clarify some of the things that I've been feeling around productivity and how it's not the end all be all. Finishing the things isn't as fulfilling as the actual act of doing it. But here's a rule I've been following for the past few months that's allowed me to control my time. I mean, as good as controlling time gets. I'm not traveling back in time or anything. But this is a secret rule that I follow now and it is patience. Yep. You heard it, it's actually really, really simple. So whenever I find myself trying to rush to finish something or rush to accomplish something, uh, it's just been so much better to force myself to slow down. Like uh, I wanna get really lean, but rather than forcing that into a small compressed time frame, I'm giving myself lots of months up to a year to go and do it. And this is coming from someone who used to just rush through everything and finish everything really fast. Uh, whenever I do rush things and finish them, there's always more to do. There's always more on my plate and it never stops. So doing more has never really made me happier. Another example is like, I want to run a marathon, but I don't think I should run one this year. Going from zero to marathon seems a little crazy. So this year I'll just do a 5k, maybe increase my mileage and maybe, just maybe, think about a half. Going slow has helped me appreciate the process of everything so much more. Instead of being like, I'm not happy because I'm not lean yet. I instead am having fun living the life that will make me healthier and make me look better. Yeah. It's okay to choose to rest some days. I feel really tired or worn down or I slept bad. Things just happen. Like Thursday, it's been raining all week long and I tend to get depressed uh, if I don't see the sun for too long. So I needed a break. I used to feel really, really guilty for taking time off. In fact, it's still really hard to get around that, but it, it's just been ingrained in me to keep working and keep working despite feeling tired or sick, but it's okay to take a break. If anything, we should be taking regular breaks here and there. But whether I do more work or not, I feel like I'm enough and I've done enough for that day. I'll just delete the task or move the task forward and then be okay with that decision that I chose to rest. But in conclusion, I'm still only taking it one step at a time, slowly moving forward, and that's all we can really do. We can't shove more stuff in the time that we have because time will move forward whether we want it to or not. So there is no perfect system, but there's the one that works for you and whatever that is, use it and then do the doing rather than the planning. Uh, planning too far ahead is often more beneficial, often more harmful than it is beneficial. And things always change. Unexpected things happen. People might suddenly crash into your house one morning and then you realize, dang, I got to focus on this. Those things actually happen. If you found this video helpful at all, consider, consider sharing this with a friend who you think struggles with doing too much. I would appreciate that very much. I'll link everything I talked about and add some tips in the description that I thought about as I was documenting this past week. But I figured there, there might be something you've already heard before. But in many ways, check those out. And I hope this video helps someone out. And whoever you are, wherever you are, just know you are enough. You don't have to do more or be more to feel like you're enough. You're already enough.